Grizzly Talks. What's going on with y'all, man? Um, this is a first for me. Um, I got a special guest, really good friend of mine, like a brother. Um, want to introduce y'all to my brother, Marcus, yeah. aka Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. How you doing, <laughs> brother? Man, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. This whole episode, man, it's it's been rough, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a very uh, it's been a very um, rough year for me in general. Mm. Um, yeah. Out of yeah. yeah, we'll get into all of it. But yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, bro, like you know, my whole meaning for starting this whole journey mm -hmm. was to be able to reach out to people. And a thing that I started to notice is um, a lot of the reach out and the feedback I'm getting is from black men, mm -hmm. and I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. Is and it's it's because we don't really have a space mm -hmm. that's safe. And that was the whole point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's an honor to bring you here. Yeah. Because, be here, yeah. yeah, like we've had conversations over the years, bro. And you know how that go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk for a long time. <laughs> so, yeah. it, you know, it's just cool to finally get you on the show and connect with you and, and you know, pick your brain on how you, how you, uh, you know, how you receive life, how you see life and, yeah. you know, trying to navigate through this journey yeah you know until we get to where we want to be yeah and you know there's a lot of hurdles along the way a lot of those yeah, yeah. it's never easy bro <laughs> and that's one thing that like people got to understand that even though life can like i always say life is beautiful mm -hmm. but it could be it could be hard yeah it'd be hard sometimes yeah. so but um where's your where's your headspace at bro we, we coming up on the holidays there's a lot going on yeah like just where, where's your headspace at? Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm a little. I feel like I'm a little out of, out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, bro. I feel like I'm a little out of it. You know, it's been a uh, it's been a very like I said, a rough year for me. Um, a lot of loss. Um, a lot of if I could put it like this. Um, in some ways, I feel exposed. Mm -hmm. Uh, in some ways, when well, a lot of ways, I feel exhausted. Mm. Um, and over a span of years to get to this point, I feel accomplished. There you go. Yep. But um, not without error. That were, yeah, <laughs> I feel that. Do you feel, I feel me? I feel so, it, bro. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I'm just kind of really just accepting. It's like as we close the year and. Um, I'm just kind of accepting a lot of what happened. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when you say exposed, that's that's big. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by that? You know, I've been having talks with a couple people, and I may have said this to you before, but it's like, you know, 28, man. And I feel like, you know, I've lived long enough as an adult to, I guess, reflect on my time as an adult, mm -hmm. the decisions I've made, and, and kind of, give an opinion on it. Yeah. Um, and I realized that when I say exposed, it's like I, I've been exposed to the air in my ways. Mm. Yep. Um, you know, and we'll get into a lot of where that exposure comes from, but that's what that means. Uh, yeah. You know, it's easy to kind of point out where you see the flaws in, in the people around you, mm -hmm. especially in their relation to you. Like if, if they're, if they're impeding on you in a certain way because of their character or because of their personality, yep. that's easy to, to find and pinpoint. Um, but to kind of look in the mirror and see like, yo, like, okay, this is where, this is all mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that's I mean? That's a hard journey, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. And uh, like, I, I think I, if I remember correctly, I think I spoke on self-reflection mm -hmm. and um, just navigating life and accepting your flaws accepting mm -hmm. when you're wrong admitting to it mm -hmm. um like you said when you look in that mirror it's like a gut check mm -hmm. it's like oh shoot like i'm able to pick out everything else that's wrong like you said but when it comes to me i kind of like yeah. oh i like brush it off or you you know you don't you try not to take it as bad because i don't I don't know why we do that i guess mm -hmm. it's like a trying to heal a self-inflicted wound you know what i mean yeah i mean for me it's it's like you try to rationalize it. Yeah, you're trying to make sense of it. You're yep. trying to make sense of it, or you try to excuse it because 
You can. Mm -hmm. You can always. It's like if you're the one judging yourself, you can always change the rules. Right. That's true. You feel me? That's like, true. So for me, I think that's what it comes down to. Until yeah. you change the rules so much that you look up and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't get no more rules to change. Right. right. You know what I mean? No. Like, it's on me. So, yeah. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. And I, I, I can relate, bro. Like, um, I would say for me, it's been, I say it's been like the last two years. Mm -hmm. Um has been like a gut check um like just speaking as being a father of a three-year-old mm -hmm. um his whole time on this earth has been like like reality check for me mm -hmm. um my uh like i never really spoke on this on this show but mm -hmm. like people that know that know my son has on the spectrum mm -hmm. so it's like taking him to speech therapy and just making sure he gets the services he needs but then it also as a father, you're worried about when he goes out into the world mm -hmm. and you can't control it. And I feel like a lot of times when it comes to reflecting on yourself, a lot of that, I think for men, bro, to be honest, a lot of that comes from us being in control of something. Mm -hmm. It's like when life is kind of spiraling out of control, I know that I got certain flaws, but. I can control this because it's me. Right. Like you said, like you can't, there's nobody else that is going to point out your flaws that only you can see. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are internal, those are the ones that affect you the most. Mm -hmm. And then that starts to trickle down into other things. So it's like when you are finally able to look in the mirror and do some self-reflecting and, and once you identify, like I always say, it's always identified and you got to attack it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, I, I agree with you. It's been a tough year, bro. Hard. It's like navigating life, trying to figure things out at home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the best you could do is do your best to get through it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and I think for me, what I found, especially in this year, and really I would say in the last two years, mm. um, is the power of honesty. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not talking like the honesty that you're comfortable with. I'm talking like the honesty that's like the stuff that you really don't tap on. Yep. You know what I mean? Especially in conversation. So um, that has been like, like I was talking to a buddy recently and um, out of all the loss and all the realizations I've come to, it's like, man, the truth really does set you free. Yep. It does. When, when you can finally accept it, bro. That's yeah. a fact. When you, when you truly know, like, I don't have to hide anything. Yeah, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 man. So like that's that's been a, a, a you know a tough pill to swallow in, in certain conversations. Mm. Um, but not you know regardless, just getting through it, bro. Yep. Just being as honest as is not even as honest as I can be. Just being honest, straight I, up. I feel you, bro. I feel you. So, and, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, as we come up on the end of this year, bro, mm -hmm. it's just I guess like what is your I never try to say expectation, but what's your outlook for the new year? Like, what are you, what are you going to strive to accomplish just like in life, career, mm -hmm. family, whatever? Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, first and foremost, you know, I'm expecting the sun in, in like six days. Yes, sir. You feel me? Yes, so, sir. Uh, embracing fatherhood is, is like, you know, I've always wanted kids mm -hmm. um, or child or however you want to phrase it. So, um, it's like getting getting that. And I'm not taking that lightly. Yeah, you know I'm grateful for it. I, I'm, I see the responsibility uh, in it from a theoretical standpoint, right? And, mm -hmm. and now embracing uh, the reality in a matter of days. Um, so being a dad, embracing fatherhood is something that I'm looking to do. Um, taking that head on. Mm. Um, I have a large vision. And I think we got into some of this. I want to say maybe at the top of the year, maybe like last year. Yep. Um, and um, I want to fully like submerge myself in that. Mm. Uh, no distractions. Um, just doing the work. There you go. Not a whole lot of talking. We done talked enough. Yep. You know yeah, what I mean? That's how you do it, bro. Uh, and we just gonna let the work speak. Yep. 
And I'm looking forward to seeing it, bro. Yeah, yeah, nah, but you'll you'll definitely be a part of those conversations when it's time to speak. You feel me? So, (laughs) so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but those are the two things that I'm prioritizing. There you go. Going forward, man. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and you know that that journey, bro, as becoming a new dad is beautiful, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, like, you know, uh, I know you probably have a lot of people that are in your age group that have kids and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's like, you know, that is going to be like a a very uh, strong tool to you when you have people that you can relate to as you go through this new journey in life. Because like, you know, as I was saying, son's three, about to be four in April, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like time speeds up, bro. Mm -hmm. Like time speeds up, but it's so beautiful, bro. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that people need to understand is like, You know, my message to everybody, you know, no matter what comes with your child, you know, you always pray for a healthy child and, you know, everything goes smooth. But it's like no matter what comes with these kids, bro, whether it's like when they get older, you got to, you know, be rough with them, Mm -hmm. just trying to get them, you know, keep them on track or, you know, dealing with stuff when they're young. The beautiful part is when you get to see them grow and, you know, like, you know, you know that you did a good job that's going to be the payout, bro. Mm. And it's like that growth of just seeing them go from not being able to do anything to crawling, to walking, mm. talking. It's a beautiful process, bro. Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm happy for you, Thank you that man. you finally get to take this journey. Yeah. You know, um, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, y'all are beautiful people. I always tell you that, like, I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate you, bro. Like appreciate you, bro. I saw, um, I went on my old Flickr page and I saw, uh, the time me, you, Dame, and uh, Courtney went yeah. to the studio. Bro, that was like <laughs> yeah. seven years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Duh, so I'm like, that right there, just seeing the growth out of everybody is a blessing to me, yeah. bro. So I uh, wish you the best, bro. Thank you. I'm man. happy for you. Like You already know that. Man, I mean, we. it's funny you bring up those pictures where I was just telling Dame, I think today or yesterday, that I found those pictures. Oh, did I you? I was going to send them to him. <laughs> um, yeah, nah, man, it's, you know. Just harping on that for a minute, man. We we've been we've been locked in for a long time. For sure, bro. <laughs> so, like a long time. Yeah, I was telling a homegirl of mine that um, I say, man, like back in the day when we was first getting started, like travel come do pictures for us. You know, yep. we take it's come to the practices, come to the shows, anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's a lot of history between us, man. That's so, for sure, bro. Um, so yeah, bro. Like I, I I wanted to I say that to say like having this conversation with you. Um, being as open with you as I will be in this conversation and um, just, you know, honoring the bond that we have, bro, and, and the time that we've put in all these years later. Yes, you know sir. I mean? so. And that, and that's the that's the thing that I always appreciate, appreciate is building bonds, bro. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know, there are bonds that are built to a certain point where it's like we may not talk for months, mm-hmm. but when we reconnect, it's like we never... Never stop talking, bro. And that that right there in any friendship, that's a friendship, bro. Yeah. And that's the thing people need to realize, like, especially as we get older, you know, um, a friendship is when you guys could step away, you could separate, you could go whole different state, country, mm-hmm. and you still get that connection. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always grateful for that. So, you know. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, hey, man. Appreciate you, bro. And I appreciate, you know, I remember when you first sent me the uh the first episode you did it uh, this joint man and i was like yo this is it yeah the, I, we back on the couch dude. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i usually had that that whole thing set up on the window okay. like you know what i'm saying yeah, 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 yeah. i just bro like i was messing um telling my wife earlier i was like i literally have all the stuff to make my own like small production situation mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. and i told her i said the thing i needed to learn because i just bought like a whole setup just for the desk but I'm like, I said, using the tools you have is so important. Mm-hmm. And it's like, until this year, I haven't really used my stuff to its full capability. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, dang, I'm putting all this money out. I'm shelling money out here and there, trying to buy stuff, trying to, because I always say when I go in, I want it to be the highest quality possible. Mm-hmm. I want people to be able to come in and be like, yo, like, this is like a production type, you know, because yeah. that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, kind of speaking on what you spoke on earlier, next year is playing no games, bro. Mm-hmm. Like full I might do a full transition to video. Like yeah. that's my next dream. Okay. My next goal. So next year is gonna be, you know, 
it's gonna be a big year, bro. Yeah. And I think I think it's gonna be a big year for you too. Uh, man, Seriously. I appreciate that, bro. And and it has to be. Yep. It has to be. You gotta bro. make it shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, for sure, man. Especially when when we get into what this year has been like. You know, it's it, it has to be twenty twenty three has to just be a year of productivity. Yep. I feel yeah. that. You know, yep. just just the work. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll put the work in. Yeah. All right, bro. Yeah. So I want you to uh I want you to get into um your thoughts, bro. Yeah. So uh, you know, tell them about it. Yeah, man. Man, first and foremost, uh, you know, the biggest loss and when we talk about exposure and and or feeling exposed and feeling exhausted, um, is is uh is is the marriage, bro. Mm. Um just to put it plainly and we can go wherever from here, man. Um, Courtney and I have been separated for five months. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So navigating that while navigating, I mean, this is like in the middle of the pregnancy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah, that's just trying to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and I wouldn't even say I mean, yeah, we're trying to figure it out from a standpoint of just navigating from that right. from that separation. But right. you know, it's it didn't start in the middle of the pregnancy, it didn't start in twenty twenty two. You know, this is a part of an ongoing conversation that we've had. Um yeah. starting in twenty twenty one more exclusively at the top of the year, um, just digging into the uh Digging in to what I like to call like removing the red tape. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, bro. You 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 married and you've been locked in for a while. You know, you you in a relationship long enough, you start to realize that you put certain you put tape on certain things that you should have like address address a little yeah. more like mm -hmm. a little more um, in depth, if you will. Yep. You know, or um, you kept the tape on too long. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? And when we started having, like, real intense conversation at the top of 2021, mm. um, it was set like, yo, you know, we start pulling this tape off, you run the risk of shattering this whole thing. Yep. Some, the tape does c keep stuff in place mm. for a while. Um, so when you start removing it, you may cause more damage than what you... I mean, yeah, what you intended. You know? yep. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, bro, and essentially, like, you know, we started having a series of conversations um, from like February of 2021 all the way up until like July this year. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so we just were talking through a lot of the the, the things, the um, issues that have taken place prior to how we got to where we were, the music, the marriage. How do these things? You know, we we've been doing it long enough to kind of have an opinion on it, right? right? And yeah. really have like some data. Yeah, to kind of look at it, analyze it, and say, okay, this is our experience, right? Um, and really like review all these things and talk about structure, um, and yeah, bro, through all of that, and and through some other experiences that took place in the middle of that, mm. which was already an exhausting and, and, and exposing conversation for both of us. Um, yeah, you, you kind of add those experiences in in the interim. And yeah, bro, we ended up in a place where um, I first brought separation up back in December last year, mm. around this time, really, yeah. this time last year. Um, you know, we were able to find a way to just continue dialogue up mm. until about, I would say, February. Okay. Um, February comes, and uh, I have a conversation with a buddy of mine at, like, Shifts my perspective on a couple things. So those conversations kind of die down because of just the perspective he gave me. So then, you know, we end up uh, navigating. That's where the pregnancy came in, right? She got pregnant about in March. Uh -huh. And um, at that time, uh, no, let me back up. So... At that time, we're navigating some things, and um, and then yeah, we, we're ha we're having some chaos, we're having some some friction, mm -hmm. and we end up um, separating. It fit like that was like a like, big situation, and we it's like yo, it's 
we both know. You know when you had one of those. Yeah, when you like, yo. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know exactly you know what you what mean, bro. Is, bro. Yes, sir. And uh, we had one of those, and there was we both knew. Yeah, this is Not pretty much out. done. And uh, the very next day, I come in uh, from like I think I had a rehearsal with another group of mine. Oh, another group I, I hit with sometimes. And I come in the house, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, anything we need to address before I shut it down for the <laughs> night?" Yeah. And uh, man, she starts essentially like she starts out and. She, you know responding and somewhere in that response she just drops yeah and, I, and I'm pregnant mm. and you know that's just like the Thanos now yeah no facts you feel me that like, changes everything bro that's like the man whatever was going on before it's like yeah alright well next page you yeah. know what I mean yeah um, and, and that was that was my pro- that was my thought process that's what I expressed to her um, and that was her thought process and uh, so we in my mind I mean, this is where, I'm going to say March, April, May, June, we just navigating through. Mm. Um, and I'm like, we'll, ta- we'll table a lot of those discussions we were having just to, we'll get to that. Yeah. We got time for all that. Yep, that's true. Um, and then, but her perspective was, yeah, I really want to, like, make sure that the relationship is, like, we're going to be parents, so we can't mm-hmm. get around that, but the relationship, let's, like, kind of continue some of that. Yeah. Um, so we get into, I didn't think that was a, the best idea, but. You know, I appreciate it and I respect that her, um, init, like her initiating that because that's yeah. been an issue for me yeah. in so many words. So she initiated that and we got, we got into those conversations and, you know, just in the spirit of being honest and like really letting you shit fly. Yeah, as you, you should. Know, yep. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. what, we, what we realized as, what we realized is, um, we want two opposite ends of the spectrum as mm. far as w- how we thought the relationship should go for. Right. And it's one of those, we so far on the opposite ends of the spectrum that is really no middle. Right. Yep. So, um, we just defaulted to, well, let's just focus on, you know, uh, being parents and, um, and if we continue Blackstone, what that looks like and all that, sh- you know, that's a different conversation, but, that's our focus, yeah. being parents and, and potentially running a business. Um, and that was in July. Wow, bro. So, you know, you know, navigating that, man, and um, although this is something I've kind of been aware of, you know, is, is just as leaders of the household, mm-hmm. you kind of see things before they... Before they happen. Before they happen. Yep. And so it didn't really catch me off guard as much as that's why the preventative work was being done mm-hmm. years ago. Yep. We having real conversations like at the beginning. Yep. Um, and the entire time. Yeah. So, you know, it's just those fact those conversations came back around and honesty did what it did. Yeah. But you know? and, and but see that 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 right that part is that's a good thing that mm-hmm. you guys were um there was a constant dialogue. Mm-hmm. There was always, you know, the the conversation of issues mm-hmm. because a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of people don't really understand is like, like uh, I've heard couples say, oh, yeah, we don't argue mm-hmm. or, you know, we don't do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, in a relationship, that's not realistic, mm-hmm. you know, and um, a thing that we tend to do, like you said, you, when, you, when you start putting tape on everything. It's like I always use the analogy of like you get a vase and it breaks. Mm-hmm. At some point it breaks and you are sitting there and you're putting the pieces together and you're doing the best you can. Mm-hmm. And like I always say with anything in life, bro, when you feel like you've done the best you can, that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you try to fix certain things, you know, maybe they can be fixed to a certain extent. But when something is fractured to a, a certain point there's only so much you can do That's a fact. and um i i just think that it was it's good that you know you got you guys were able to constantly keep having a conversation mm-hmm. because that's important you know um in my marriage we went through the same kind of things mm-hmm. you know uh it was it's hard <laughs> one thing like people say oh well you know things don't change just because you get married that's not true mm. Because, yes, it's just a, a, an additional title, but when you start getting a lot of things involved, once you're with a person for longer, 
Mm-hmm. People change, bro. Mm-hmm. And situations change. And it's never knocking anybody else. But marriage is it's a, it's a job. Mm-hmm. It's a thing where you got to constantly, like you said, you constantly have a conversation. You're constantly trying to adapt to that person. You're constantly, you know, accepting certain things mm-hmm. and, and, and bending a little bit. Mm-hmm. And there gets to a point where people can't bend anymore. That's a fact. And to me, it's beautiful that you guys are able to identify that and you're still able to have a conversation I'm like, hey, we got this kid coming though. Mm-hmm. And you got it at the end of the day. That's what's important. This is fine. You know, because as long as that your new, as long as your child feels loved and, and you know, you, you guys are doing what you got to do for him still a beautiful situation bro you got to always try to find the beauty in the situations and and make the best of them and do what you got to do yeah. you know um so like like you know like i was saying it's good that you guys were able to have those conversations and when you get to a point of like hey like this isn't you know it's not meshing how it's supposed to mm-hmm. maybe you, you you know whatever the situation is some mm-hmm. people separate and, and, and figure it out mm-hmm. or some people just go to several ways but still make it work yeah. you know for 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 the fam yeah and that's what's important Man, so, that's that's everything. I mean, to jump in like no, that. you good, but bro. that's, but the family is everything, man. For sure. Um, you know, we, we've talked. Me and you've personally talked about that. Uh, yep. Before, so it's like, even in separating and, and moving towards with the next phase of what that is, um, it's like I still have a family mindset. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just what we. This is what I grew up seeing. I'm right. Just, I can't see it no other way. Right. So. um you know, a lot of how I've conducted myself um, prior to this. Because, again, in seeing it coming, it's like, yo, you got to be ready for all outcomes. Yep. Every day. So, so it's like I've conducted myself in a way where it's like whatever way it went, all right, we can move honorably from that position. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the bond is still intact, man. You know, I, I started to tell um, a few of my close homies um this same information, not a whole lot, but a few. And when I told them, it's like, man, we didn't even know. Yeah, you can't tell, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, and this goes back to July, man. And, and the issues go back further than that. But it's like, regardless, it's like, yo, can't nobody tell. Uh-huh. And that's because the, the bond that's been stabilizing the relationship the entire time is a real bond. For sure. And it's yeah. clear. It's clear. Bro. It's a clear bond. It's a clear bond. Yep. And so, so we've been able to, um, you know, keep that intact. And and that's what I'm looking to like uh, continue to strengthen, and and uh, really raise the, you know, raise baby boy in. Yes, sir. You know, because we've been able, you know, all the problems aside, and we can get into the problems offline. But it's like, you know, all the problems aside, um, this is someone I love, bro. For sure. This is someone you know. You, You've you've been around, bro. You've seen what we built. Yep. You know what I mean. You saw it from the really from the beginning. Yes, sir. Um. So. Yeah, man. It's it's everything about it is authentic. Yeah. No, bro. Let me tell you something. <laughs> like I never told you, yeah. but like, even at you guys' wedding, right? Mm-hmm. My wife, not knowing you guys to, to the extent that I did, mm-hmm. she was able to identify like, yo, like that's true love. Mm-hmm. And the thing people need to understand is just because certain situations didn't work out how we planned them to mm-hmm. doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it changes in this instance a bond with people. Mm-hmm. And people need to realize that a bond before anything is more important. Because you know, bond a bond to me, like that word itself, is just that's true love. Because when you think about it, people could be people could have love for each other. And as people say, be in love, but you never had that bond. That's a fact. And some people don't have a bond, you know, and you're going into the marriage with this. I say kind of like a falsehood. Mm -hmm. You're kind of making it up in your head that, oh, yeah, like, you know, like uh, there was a a guy. I'm just going to use him as as an example that this lady um, started dating. Right. And the guy said that his parents pressured him into marrying this chick. Mm -hmm. They were married for 11 years, and he said he never loved her. Mm. And he said he was he's never felt like he was ever in love. Mm. And I'm like, that's crazy. But when you really think about it, there's a lot of situations like that. It's a fact. 
And when those type of situations end, that's when it's the the messy divorce mm-hmm. or the messy separation. Um, you know, that's where the drama comes in because if you have a bond, even if something didn't work out, a bond means I would never try to hurt you. Yeah. And I would never go out of my way to destroy who you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the fact that we're stable, still able to coexist together and, and connect and, and, you know, do whatever we got to do. That's what everybody that decides to get married. That's what your, your, your desire should be to just have a bond. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I appreciate that because just hearing that word, like that meant a lot to me just now because nowadays, Bro, finding a bond even in friendships is hard. Man, because <laughs> people real. aren't authentic, bro. That's a fact. You know, um, we we get caught up in the 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 race of life. Mm-hmm. We get confused by what's love and what's lust because that's a real thing. That's a fact. Um, and people don't know the true meaning of of love. They don't know the true meaning of. I'm not gonna say all, but it seems like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems like that's the the, the new thing now, where it's like. They have a falsehood of what they think marriage is or mm-hmm. what they think relationships are because they're seeing things on, on TV or, or or online where it's like, oh, yeah, he's buying her X, Y, Z. That does not translate to love at all. That doesn't build a bond. Nope. If the if the things are the thing, is that that's what's keeping you mm-hmm. or that's what got you guys together? Yeah. That's not authentic, bro. Nah, man. People got to realize that, bro. Like, that's not an authentic bond. A bond is when, like, that joker can't be broken. That's a fact. No matter what. Even if it's a situation where you guys aren't together, bro, but you still know how to navigate, Yeah, that's a bond, bro. So, I mean, you, you said something, bro, that jumped out at me. You know, you, you talked about people referencing uh, some of what they see on TV, movies, mm-hmm. and social media. And it's like, man, what I realize is a lot of people don't even have a real... Um, Example. example of what that is. That's facts. So it's like they are—they start out with a warped view. I mean, they start out with a Disney mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's just not what it is. Nope. Oh, marriage is glitz and glam. No. Man, nah, bro. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, and I'm fortunate to like my my folks have been together my entire life. Yeah, and, and still are. So it's like I saw what that actually entails. Uh-huh. And you know, when you get when you get in a relationship with someone who doesn't who may not have it, that example. Yep. Or the example that they have is one that they almost reject, but that is a closest thing to what it to actually what it is. is. Yep. Um it just creates a lot of disconnect. That's true. Because it's like if if you have it's like if if you know what it's like to build a particular thing cuz you watched it for 20 years of your mm-hmm. life. And yep. You went out in, in in the world and and now you're trying to replicate what yep. you saw built. Uh, which you saw being maintained, um, you're using all the tools and, and all the methods that you saw. That's true. So you're 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 relying on your training. You're relying on like your yep. programming. Yep. So that's your programming though. So right. what is their? They got twenty years of their what? own programming. Yep. What are they relying on? Right. You that's true. I mean? um, and these are things that even this when I this goes to the exposed piece. It's like it's a nineteen year old. You know, you're not as aware of these of these things. Uh-huh. You know, I didn't get married at 19, but you know, I committed to her at 19, knowing that I was marrying her. Right. Like I didn't, you know, um, I courted this woman. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? And, and and made sure like, yo, this is who I'm marrying. And it wasn't like a indecisive. I don't know. Let me figure it out. It's like, nah. This is the person on this train. This train is going. Yeah. Straight to this and. Even in that, being exposed by like when you when you so one track minded uh, that you're not really hearing what the other person is saying. Yep. You know that's on you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you're right. Bro. You feel me? So you're like right. the exposed piece is like you know when you when you when you feel like you could put your big boy pants on mm-hmm. and you put them on. And however many years later you realize, dang, I done, arc- I done orchestrated or, or crafted this whole thing. Yep. So regardless, so we talk about men and we talk about uh, leading. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, all that shit is on you. Yep. That's true. You, you're <laughs> you right. You feel me? You're right. Um, and it's not the, there's enough accountability to go around, let's be clear. Mm-hmm. 
there's enough accountability to go around, but the accountability that I take, the responsibility that I take, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't change because cause just because you're young and you feel like, you know, oh yeah, I can I can manage this, I can navigate this. Yeah. You thought you thought you could, <laughs> and then that, that's the humbling part of life, bro. Man, so much humility in yeah. that. Man. So much humility and failure. Yes, it is. That's very. That's a fact. That is a fact because I can I can I can count. I can't even count how many times I failed, bro. Mm. And you know, uh, just in in my failures and constantly failing, failing today, failing yesterday, fail tomorrow. Mm. Because no matter what you do, nobody's perfect. One, but. You're always going to take an L some way, somehow. Mm-hmm. And the thing that we have to realize that, you know, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Because when you, your wins and losses, you once they balance, they balance themselves out, bro. You know, because you might be losing sh- for weeks straight. Right. You might just keep losing. But then that one win that you get, bro, it's like, it's, it's you got to, you got to allow that win to be bigger than what it is. Yeah. That's the thing I always try to say is like. Even your small wins, that's still a W, bro. So and people uh, tend to kind of brush that off where it's like, oh, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It's an accomplishment. It's something that you achieve. And your loss is you like, okay, so what What did I What did I do? What did we do? What was the situation? What went wrong? Mm-hmm. And there's power in understanding what caused the loss. That's a fact. You know, um, being able to identify what, what, what happened, being able to tweak things about yourself, make adjustments any kind of way you can, to me, those are W's too. Mm-hmm. When you're able to identify the problems, man. Like, I, I tell my wife that all the time, like, being able to identify, like, with me, being able to identify internal, internal issues is a big deal to me. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, in our previous talk, where it's just like, a lot of times you'll choose to ignore them. But when you get to that point of being like, okay, what what did I do wrong, Trav? What'd you do wrong, bro? You just look at yourself in the mirror and you really start to pinpoint them issues. Mm-hmm. You know, that's growth. That's constant growth. Um, and those are wins. Yeah. So, you know, I commend you for, you know, you, you're going through it. And like you said, at the beginning, you got to look at certain signs. And that term of like, you know, you can't build a house by yourself, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 it's a thing where, you know, we try to make a structure. You know, we're looking at the big picture. We got the blueprint. But if both people don't see the same blueprint or, and you know, whatever it is, if, 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 if both parties are not looking at the same blueprint and we go to build this thing, it's never going to be stable. That's a fact. You know, it's never going to be the idea that I had on paper because, you know, their blueprint was different. And and we gotta get to a point where like that's okay, yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, we were we were kind of talking about burnout. Yeah, man, I want you to to kind of get into that. Yeah. On from your perspective. Um, yeah, I think honestly, bro, that's I'm there. Yeah. You know, it's like going back to how we started, like feeling exposed and feeling exhausted. I mean, the exhausted part is is really like what made me go. Hold on, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, and where is it coming from? Yep. Um. So yeah, man. Um. And as like, like I said, we were talking, bro. It's like my biggest fear was was just getting everything you want and not being in the condition to, not even just to enjoy it, but just to embrace it. Yep. That's facts. You know what I mean? Yep. Um. And it's like, bro, like where I'm at right now. You know, let alone when we talk resentment brewing because of whether it's internal resentment because you feel like you didn't put in enough work mm-hmm. because you feel like you didn't, um, you know, I'm going to say, you feel like you know what you didn't do. Right. That's fact. Um, and, you know, all those feelings of the guilt that come with that, uh, it's like, at this point, it's like, man, forget it, burnout or not, no excuses. That's facts. And, and. You know, and that just comes with having sometimes you got to remove things. Sometimes you got to readjust how, how much you put in. Um, but for me, bro, that's, I'm just analyzing all of that mm-hmm. and making the most informed decision I can because that burnout, bro, I feel it. I feel you, bro. You know, from a music perspective, bro, I've been outside since 13. I'm 28 now. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I'm like, these next five years, bro, kind of going back to something you said offline, it's like, these next five years, man, that's it for me. 
That's what I'm feeling. Yeah, I like, feel if that. If I don't, if I don't, this play I'm running right now, um, bro, this is it. Mm-hmm. At least it's for for I for how how I see it going down. Um, I got five years, so yeah. I'm, I'm a put everything. We gonna we gonna burn. <laughs> <laughs> We're burning until we're going to both of them, oh, we bro. We're going to broke because at this point, ain't nothing else on the table. I feel you. I feel that. So I feel that. And it's like, I guess the, the hard part, bro, is like, how do you how do you navigate the the burnout you you experience from the mm-hmm. outside? Mm-hmm. Like, not even, not even the burnout from pursuing the goal, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the crazy part. Yeah. Like, for me, I'm losing options to where I'm like, okay, how do I adjust to the burnout I'm experiencing from everything else mm-hmm. and so I can focus on my dream mm-hmm. or focus on whatever I'm trying to achieve? I don't know the answer to that one. That's I, hard, bro. I don't think I had the answer either, bro. I mean, honestly, I can honestly, I, we could probably say I've been mismanaging a lot of the energy. I, I agree. Same you know what I mean? Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's probably what I need to like look into yeah. or... or, or, or get some guidance on man because um it's like uh it's like man you ever you ever go through something or in regards to your dreams and you have this thing where like you feel like damn i don't wasted all this time so now you try to overcompensate mm-hmm. yep. for the time you didn't exactly you feel like you feel like you didn't put in and so it's like damn like i feel like i've done that a mm-hmm. few different times. Yep, and now you're just doing it a different way. And and really, when you do that, it's like that's what creates a lot of the burnout. That is facts. That's facts. Cause you now you you running this you running a full sprint when you really don't even have to. Yeah, you're right. But you feel like, well, I ain't been sprinting this whole time, so let me let me do it now, so I can feel like I'm doing something. Yep, I gotta catch um, up. Yeah, man. So maybe that's you know maybe maybe that that's a uh, maybe that that's a key factor in. How we've gotten, we've gotten. Yeah, that's true. Cause, you know, sometimes I have I have ideas quite often, mm-hmm. but the problem with me is it will like it's how they say like some of my ideas literally literally keep me up at night, bro. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm supposed to be in bed, mm-hmm. I'm over here or at my desk. Or I'm sitting on this couch watching TV, not mm-hmm. really watching it. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking. I'm literally sitting here like, man, if I had a budget. Like, mm-hmm. if I had a budget given from a studio, we could do this. We could rock this way. Mm-hmm. Then you start thinking, well, how can I minimize and, you know, do something on a smaller scale to still try to achieve that goal? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you go out and you try to do it and it, it kind of falls short. Mm-hmm. That is, for me, that's like the burnout from mm-hmm. photography and, um, you know, trying to just figure out what to do with it, where to go. Um I've gotten to a point in my life now where I chose to not focus on what others are doing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a major part and a good thing to avoid when trying not to experience so much burnout. Mm-hmm. Because once you start to look at where other people are or things that other people have done, you uh, you tend to minimize your accomplishments. Yeah. And once you do that, you're burning yourself out. So fun. And, you know, you have to realize that as long as you're working towards your goals constantly, you don't have to sprint. Mm. I could do a jog. Yeah. It might take me, like you said, you you know, you gave yourself a deadline. These five years that you're laser focused on this accomplishment, like this goal, whatever your dream is, you gave yourself a, a timeline and you know, you're 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 this is your your point where you gotta write yourself an instruction manual. Mm-hmm. You gotta start to um navigate it the best way you can and then you know once you feel like you have done all you can do it it, you know you you hit that payout Mm -hmm. that's always the goal is to hit that payout but at the same token like the way i started looking at it was as long as i could say i tried bro i feel good about that yeah i'm happy with that you know um like my dream uh just to like briefly speak on it i look at a lot of uh like street photographers, right? Mm-hmm. So people that literally went out, say in the seventies, eighties, they went out and um, you know, they were just taking pictures of people in the streets, bro. And it was like, you know, at the time they were they were not received. Mm-hmm. And it's like that with all art, music, painting, uh, photography, video, whatever. It's like 
the the reward isn't there right away Mm -hmm. and sometimes i feel like when you see you know people getting that payout like that it's because they're kind of like you said offline hyper extending themselves Mm -hmm. or they're doing things that they know they're not comfortable doing Mm -hmm. they're uh they're they're doing a sprint and when you get to that sprint you burn yourself out it's not even just the exhaustion factor. It's the you start fumbling, mm-hmm. you start messing up, you start doing things that's out of character, that's what's you know. And then doing in that turn, doing that, you did all this sprinting. You're trying to catch up. You get to the goal, you burn out, and you throw it all away. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you got to do a jog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if, you know if you if you a big boat big boy big body bends like me, you got to do a walk. You got to well, you got to walk, and then you got to jog again, and then once you get tired halfway around the track, you be like, "All right, time to walk." <laughs> and look, hey, bro, look, look, the way I accepted it, bro, it's okay to walk, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that translates to life, bro. Yeah. Like some of us just aren't in shape in life, bro. Not even physically. Yeah. yeah. You got to be like that mental fitness, bro. Yeah. That's important. That like mental fitness helps you not get burned out. Yeah. But, you know, like just getting back to the point of like the outside just coming in and just crashing down on you. There's no way to avoid it. Mm-hmm. Life is going to be life. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of like how you say you gave yourself this five year deadline with me, bro. Like it's hard for me to, to, to give it another five. Mm. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm at a point where I have to make something happen. And then even the thought of like, OK. In this type of industry, what is making making it happen look like? Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what the payout is. I don't know if it will be worth it. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, you know, there's so many people doing it. I'm loving the art. Mm-hmm. Like, the things that I see online, bro, it's just amazing the work that people could do. And it's just like the only thing I ever dreamed to achieve. And it's kind of that's what brought me back. The one thing I've always wanted was to touch somebody with it. Mm. If somebody can see the art, bro, you know, and they, 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 you know, they like it, they observe it and they, they, you know, hit me. Feedback is beautiful. Mm. Whenever I get any type of feedback from my work, I'm like, I'm touching somebody. Yeah. And that's important to me. So yeah. even if it, it never goes anywhere, I can say I did it. Yeah. And, you know, that one part of my life will forever be a memory. Yeah. So it's like. I always will encourage you, bro, because mm-hmm. you keep putting that work in. You have the vision. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing a lot of people lack is the vision, mm-hmm. you know. So once you have a vision of what you want to do, only you can stop you, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then that's real. Only only, only you can stop you. Only you can get in your way. Yeah. And, you know, this five years, make the push, make the drive. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Make all the plays as, as best you can, and you're going to be good. Yeah. I have a strong feeling. Man. Like, seriously. Because, you know, you've already put the foundation up. Yeah. Just got to build the rest. Man, you, I appreciate your words, bro. And, sure, and man. I know, like I said, man, you, you go back. We go back a long time, bro. Yes, so, sir. You know, you, you've seen a lot of it. Um, and me to you, bro. Like I, I've watched you navigate, man. I've watched you... Um, Experiment, explore, try different things, and try different things. And I'm not gonna lie, bro. I like what you're doing. I appreciate you from, it. From from the photo from the photo shoots I've seen you do, um, and I've been sharing them with yeah. some homies, um, and even transitioning into this medium. Mm-hmm. Bro, when you it took me to the first uh, first thing you uploaded on YouTube, I told you I was amazed. I'm like, man, this yeah. this is it. Like this I is a thing that. where it's like where I'm seeing you. Yeah, and. Honestly, bro, that's what made me want to do this. Yeah, bro, I'm glad you came, dog. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, man. It means like, a lot. Of course, bro. Like, and it ain't just because we we boys or we got history. It's like, nah. When I saw you doing this, I said, man, that that's him. Like, that's his lane. Uh-huh. You know. Um, and I love to see it, bro. I love to see it, man. And I'm just happy for your progression, bro. I appreciate that, and, bro. Uh, and I got a feeling, man. The same feeling you got for me, bro. You know. We we at that point where we're both kind of giving ourselves these like, all right, <laughs> we on the clock. You know what I mean? So it's like that's facts. You know that's that's some of that good pressure. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, bro, from what I've seen you do already, just with experimentation and just like 
let me try this. All right, I'm not feeling it. Let me go to this angle and say, man, I, yeah. 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 Because now we don't got no other choice. That's what I'm saying. And But it, it, I think it's like, it come back to what you say. It's like, even though you, you look at your resume almost, right? You're looking at it, it's like, is that really me doing enough? Mm. That's the that's the hard question. And mm. it's like, as long as I still have that that question in my mind, like, dang, did I do enough? Mm. Is this enough that I'm, you know, that I'm putting into this? Mm-hmm. That's when it's like, okay, if that question goes away, then I know that it's like, okay, bro, it's time to stop. If that question ever goes away, that's when it's like, okay, I know now. And, you know, the balance of family life with this, bro. I can imagine. And and it's like, you know, like me and one of my other uh, photography buddies, we were talking about how, um, you know, the DMV is so creative, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the beautiful thing about this area. Mm-hmm. There's people that do everything. Yeah. And they're everywhere. Yeah. There's people in... in office jobs mm-hmm. people in grocery stores whatever wherever you meet somebody somebody has a crazy talent bro mm-hmm. and but the problem is there's not a lot of resources i find anyway in this area that encourage those things to happen mm-hmm. um like for example uh i use a lot of um i use a lot of different apps to to find places to shoot at because now I'm in a position where I would rather be controller the light i don't like shooting outside mm-hmm. i've really gotten away from that mm-hmm. <laughs> i hate it um, and it's like, you look online, everything good is up North, bro. Mm-hmm. New York. And I, and I noticed that with a lot of things like New York, Atlanta, now LA, now I start to understand. I see like, okay, so that's why all these productions go to different places, mm-hmm. like those big time cities, because there's the resources there. Yeah. And it's like, imagine if, you know, there was more resources for musicians and, and um you know people into the media side of things like whatever like podcast yeah. or video recording or whatever if there was more if there was more um resources and and a push for that type of thing people like us i feel like wouldn't experience so much burnout mm. your environment causes burnout that's true you know it does play a role yeah so it's like when you constantly have to figure out what to do and where you're going to find certain stuff. It's like, bruh. Yeah. Like, you just be like, man, I don't even know what to make, how to make this shake. <laughs> yeah, for real, bro. You know? And so, you brought up family life and, and bro, you know, we, we've we been doing this. It, this has been one of the key conversations we've talked about since we met, man, is balancing, like, you know, we, we guys with passions and we know what we want to do, but we in full-blown careers. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, <laughs> bro. Bro, we in a full blown career. Yes, bro. That you actually got to show up for. Yeah, it ain't like oh, I'm just here sometime. No, yeah, man, you locked you, in. Man, you got to show up, or <laughs> it all stops. Facts. The dream, like, oh no, I ain't got no dream. <laughs> I gotta make this check. Nah, yet. facts. You know. So, so when you're responsible for your own funding, and these ain't this ain't no woe is me. It's just calling it what it is. It's facts. You're responsible for your own funding, so we go and get these jobs that's going to provide the funding. Mm-hmm. Then you got the family, you got the marriage, you got a kid, you know what I mean? So you got to find that time to split that, you know, with the career that you really ain't even connected to. That's facts. Yep. All to kind of fund this dream. So, you know, that dynamic in and of itself is burning out. It yep. goes that's into facts. what I talked about, you know, earlier. Like, yep. You, we 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 carrying all these things, man. Yep. It, it's either I drop something or this stuff gonna fall on me. Yep, <laughs> it will crush you, bro. And nah, it will crush bro, you. we talking in a very real way. That's facts. You know what I mean? So um, that shit is heavy, bro. Bro, I'm 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 telling you, and it's just like, you know, the the outside pressures transcend just regular life now you know life is is mixed up with a whole bunch of stuff bro like stuff that you don't see coming Mm -hmm. you know granted perfect example a lockdown yeah what the fuck yeah weren't expecting that (laughs) that's a fact that stops everything literally you know um or you know you you you, there could be people in situations where oh man like i want to buy whatever to you know pursue this goal but groceries bro Mm -hmm. or this gas Mm -hmm. it's like the the outside is screaming when you're trying to be at peace and you're trying to focus on what it is that you need to focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's just the hardest part for me, bro, is those outside noises. Just like, how do you drown them out? Mm-hmm. And, you know, in, in, in experiencing burnout, 
it's also for me, bro. It's been like a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Like I was just telling you offline, like the stress just seems to come from everywhere. You know, um, when you have a job that's so consuming mm -hmm. and and restrictive, you mm -hmm. know, where it's like you can only do so much um, because of work. Mm -hmm. You're always there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's like the timing aspect and, and you know, ba the balancing act that we do every single day, mm -hmm. that burnout is serious. But I always tell people, like I told my wife, like it's burnout, but it's a blessing at the same time. Yeah. Because yeah. without certain stuff, we wouldn't be here, bro. Yeah. Wouldn't have certain things that we were able to get to pursue that dream. That's a fact. So it's like, yeah, like it might be time restricting, but it could be a whole lot worse. It can be. It could be, bro. <laughs> a and whole it, lot worse. And, and this recipe is a recipe we, we created. We still got to keep that responsibility and accountability at the forefront. You yep. know, we, we, we entered into this knowing the risk. That's facts. So here we are. And, uh, and we got to navigate it, man. And speaking of burnout, I'll just make a left. But, you know, when I look at my vision, man, you know, something else, if you don't mind me going back to the loss thing. No, for sure. Um, just to be real, we talked about this when I pulled up. Um, yeah, man, like a buddy of mine, this this brother was um, a part of the vision that I'm crafting. Huh. And this man has been you know, been a part of my life, like a big brother in some ways, not even some ways, like in, in a lot of ways, uh, since since I was 13. Hmm. Um, so, you know, we've navigated, I'm talking about getting me my first job. I mean, this, he literally walked me in the door, Yeah, got me my first uh, job, been tied to the music. A lot of the stuff we did as Blackstone early on, it was done in his crib. And, and so when we get to this point, and I'm crafting out this this vision, bro. You've heard some of it, and we'll over time as I'm actually developing it, you'll be right in those conversations, and and hopefully a part of it. Um, you know, up if if you're open to it. Um, but all that to say, I'm developing this business with two good brothers that I've been involved with this entire time for the last at least 10, 15 years, mm. and. Uh, my man, my man checked out of here over the weekend. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah, Seriously. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's something I'm still, like, wrapping my head around um, simply because, I mean, I'm, this is someone I like, literally embedded in the, yeah. in, in the, you know, although it's a vision that I have, it's like, you got people you build and help, helping you build it out. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, bro. And Dude. this is some, this is like a brother to me. So it's like, we talk about burnout. And all the different things that he may have been carrying, it's like, man, that shit, that shit sucks, bro. I feel you, bro. I feel you. And it's like, in a situation like that, you know, like I said earlier, bro, it's hard for your loss. And in a situation like that, it's like, you know, how do you recover? Yeah. And I think the best way to look at that type of situation is when you think about all the stuff that he's done for you. And it's, it's just kind of like going back to... Um, we're well, not going back to, but um, like photography for me, like I don't share this with a lot of people, but the true reason I got into it was because of my grandmother. Mm. In 2013, she passed away mm. and it was, I was like, I never want to miss anything ever again. Mm -hmm. And when you get to a point like in grief, you'll start to realize that this is what they wanted for you. Mm. They didn't help you all this way to want you to stop because once you stop that's when you lose them you know what i mean yeah you gotta keep that dream alive bro he helped you this far he gonna keep helping you yeah. you feel me he's always gonna be there and that's the thing that you can't forget it is if it's not in the physical you're gonna hear them voices you're gonna when you sleep you're gonna see them sometimes yeah. you know um loss is heavy it's hard and you know but in life the beauty that you know trying to see a positive a beauty that comes out of is like i still get to carry your dream yeah and that's what you're gonna do yeah he he i still saw the the videos um i don't think i ever had the, the honor of meeting him but just seeing the videos of how you guys were and how he was he put that in you bro yeah. he saw he sees it still yeah. and you know that you got to keep going that's a fact so you know you can't let it stop you you know, grieve. You got to grieve, bro. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Like, man to man. Uh, like, I talked in one of my other videos. So, 
okay to cry. Mm. So I'm always here, bro. Yeah. You know, you could call me whenever. I don't care. I, I'm there, bro. Yeah. Um, you got to grieve. You got to go through it, you know. And when you go through it and, and you, you know, when you finally come out, you know, um, you'll be you'll be better for it. Yeah. And, you know, um, as sad as the situation is, bro, let's just life is crazy that way, yeah. you know. And uh, I, I just pray for 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 everybody involved bro and you know as your brother i'm here for you you know it's a, it's a tough situation and like i can't really speak too much on it because mm -hmm. like i said i had an honor of meeting a man but i could tell just from what i've seen from what you guys shared like he he saw that in you bro yeah. you know i appreciate your words bro and and i appreciate you extending yourself in that way man and um you know you, it is crazy how life works bro because uh you know um at the same time as, as as this is transpiring, like I said earlier, man, you know, I'm six days out from being a dad. Yeah, and when you posted that, that's the first thing that, like, bro, no lie, yeah. that's the first thing that came to my head. Yeah. I was like, it's just the irony of it. Yeah, and this is like, it's weird. It is. It's not going. It's not going to make sense when no, I say this. Yeah. But literally, the Sunday before my son was born was when Nipsey got killed. Wow. And it's like, I think back on it because I was like, I just started getting into his music and mm -hmm. I really like watching docs and mm -hmm. learning like how to, the kind of person he was. Like I appreciated who he was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, just finding out about somebody and you just start to build a liking to him and then they take it out and then a blessing comes like right away. Mm -hmm. It's not the same kind of connection as you with your, mm -hmm. with your boy. I'm not trying to make it relate no, that way, could. but you know, life is crazy like that, bro. Yeah, bro. You take a hard loss and it's like, in this situation, it's like, how the hell do you balance that? Yeah. It's like you're grieving, but you're happy at the same exact yeah. time. That is crazy. Insane, bro. It's like, but you got to remember, bro, like, you got to you gotta give yourself time to grieve, but you also have to celebrate that little boy. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. That's, that's, but that, that right there goes to show you that life is crazy. Yeah. It's a roller coaster. It, it doesn't make sense, but... You know, it's it's it just it just that's how it is, bro. That's, you ain't you ain't lying, bro. And that's you how it lying, is. Man. So, but bro, I, I just wanted to say to you, man, like like we said at the beginning, I appreciate you being here. Yeah. You know, yeah. I appreciate the, the person you are. Same. Bro. And and that that's the thing that a lot of us need to get to is tell your brothers that you love them. Yeah. I love you, bro. I like love seriously. You, bro. seriously, and 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 people like always speak to my men. And, and women, I don't want this to be a, like a one-dimensional yeah, yeah, one thing, mm -hmm. but, you know, in our community, bro, if we don't hold each other accountable, mm -hmm. we don't hold each other down, mm -hmm. never hold each other back, mm -hmm. and constantly speaking a good word, bro, mm -hmm. into somebody's life. Got to. It's very important. Um, so I just want to send this, send this off with y'all. I want to say thank you to my brother again. Yeah. Um, it was a beautiful conversation, much needed for me. Same. Um and, you know, I hope we get to do it again, bro. Got to. I uh, got some ideas that I want to work out with you. Yeah. And, you know, we'll figure things out as as, as men as we grow and, yeah. and go through life. So I appreciate you, brother. I man. appreciate you, man. Love you, bro. I love you, too. It's, it's for life, man. Yes, sir. So sure. I'll send you all off with that. This was another episode of Grizzly Talks. And I'll see you all in the next one. My man.